Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the concept of Docker container. So let's try to learn what is a Docker container and what are the technologies that are relied behind the Docker container or the Docker engine. Let's try to see. In the previous session, we have understood what are the Docker default parameters and how we can check this Docker default parameters by using the Docker space info. So if you try to type the command Docker space info in your Ubuntu server, so you'll be able to see all the parameters or the Docker in related information regarding the client and the server information, everything you can able to see it. So we have discussed about the each one in our previous video. Now let us understand what is a Docker container. Before Docker came into the picture, so we used it to have LXC. LXC means it's a Linux container, but it is specific to only one platform. That is nothing but uh, one, one OS only. So it is specific to only one particular platform. Docker is a cross platform, which means I can install on Linux, Windows, Mac or any kind of operating system. So whereas in the earlier we used to have a Linux container in order to LXC to create the containers and that one is only working in only one particular platform that is nothing but in the Linux and if you want to use this LXC in another operating systems means we cannot use it whereas the Docker is a cross platform so that means you can use the Docker in any operating systems like Linux, Windows, Mac, Unix any kind of operating system you can use it. Docker has been written in Go language and it is released as an open source in 2015 2015 or 2013 something like that so the Docker the language which was written Docker is, uh, sorry, the language, the Go language is the language which was written by the Docker, uh, not by the Docker, Docker was written in Go language. Docker did not develop any new functionalities. So if you try to understand, Docker doesn't have any new functionalities that has been introduced. It is just using the existing functionality of the Linux. So those functionalities are nothing but kernel namespaces and C groups. C groups are nothing but control groups. And it is having its own functionalities as well. So other functionalities also it will have. So the main functionalities are, it will use this Linux existing functionalities, kernel namespaces and also the C groups, which has nothing but control groups. That is the reason why Docker became more popular than any other tool. So why it has become popular? Because Docker is a cross platform. So let us discuss what are the components we have in the Docker engine. So whenever I am talking about the Docker server, Docker engine or anything means, so both are one and the same only. Server, if I am telling like that means, three are one and the same only. So the first one is the Docker daemon. So here discussing about the components we have in the Docker engine. So the first component is Docker daemon. In Docker engine, we have a component like Docker daemon. So it's not a Java, actually it's spelling mistake. We have a component like Docker daemon, which is nothing but a server. If you remember while installing the Docker engine, I have shown you the package called Docker CE. That is nothing but community edition. There is nothing but your server package, which is also called as a Docker engine. So this is the Docker demand. So that is the main thing. And the another one is a Docker client. Next, we have a Docker client, which you execute the Docker CLI commands like Docker pull, Docker push, Docker container create, Docker image pull, something like that. We will be using different types of commands So in the Docker client. And this Docker client will talk to the Docker engine or the Docker server. And the last one is a Docker registries. So if I want to create a containers using the Docker engine means first I need to download those images. So whenever you want, you try to create an image, first you need to download the image or we need to use the image. Using the image only, we can create a container. Without using the image, we cannot create a container. By using that images, I have to create a container. Docker registry is nothing but we have a predefined images, just we need to use it, that's it. So think of this Docker registry is nothing but dockerhub.com. So like just like the npm registry how you will be having so all the public npm packages in the same scenario so you will be having all the docker images public uh, docker images just you can pull it and you can use that image if you want to build your own images i don't want to if you don't want to use that predefined images means you can do that docker registry is an open source everybody can download images and create a container for example, let's say that already predefined image, you don't want to use it. You need to build, build your custom images means then also you can do it using the Docker. That is not a problem. The last one is the, the next one is the Docker objects. So what is this objects? Objects are nothing but 
downloading the images managing the images creating the container managing the container creating and managing the volumes networking services etc technically we all call we call these all things as objects so underlying technologies that are used in the docker so first we have learned all the docker uh, components so now we need to learn underlying technologies that are used in the docker the first one is the namespaces it is an existing feature in the linux os means linux kernel so those are nothing but pid net ipc m mount utc uts these are all namespaces that are used in the linux that are used in the docker c groups you can limit the memory and cpu available to a specific container so using the control group you can limit the memory and cpu available to a specific container control groups are nothing but uh, c groups are nothing but control groups it means i will assign some memory and cpu to the container and it should not cross behind that so that that will be taken care by the control groups this will be taken care by the c group or the control group the next one is the union file system if you write some content in a container we need to use some specific file system right so whenever you are writing some content or creating some content in a container means so we need to have some uh, some type of file system so we have something called as an ufs device mapper btrfs vfs etc so this type of uh, ufs device mapper so this type of things are their file system and not, and, the, and the another one is a container format so this is one thing you need to understand it is nothing but so whatever the features we have learned it right so something like uh, namespaces c groups file system so these are all the things are bundled together and they are they are made into a particular format and this format will be used by the docker let's say that for example in our windows best example i can say that you have a file and you want to zip that file so we have different types of zipping 7z is there zip is there tar.g is there so these all do does the one and the same only so compressing the file so we have a different formats in the same scenario so container formats also we have different formats we have a container format example like lib container bsd jail solaris jones so these all things what it will have uh, contain is in those it will contain kernel namespaces control groups file system management so these all the things you will be having and what is the format the docker will use is the lib container so right now docker is using the lib container in the back end it is using this particular format to handle your multiple to handle multiple functionalities related to the container creation and many more so this is the uh, image which i which i want try to show this docker architecture so at the, the bottom you will be having a docker server that is nothing but a docker daemon and in between this one you were having rest api and docker cli and the docker cli will communicate to the docker daemon using the uh, help of rest api and the docker will manages the data volumes images container networks these are all the core functionalities of the docker so i'll try to explain you this this is the image and let's go here in the diagram you can see the docker server and the docker cli so here you will be able to see the docker server that is nothing but docker daemon and also the docker cli client we will run the cli commands and it will reach to the docker daemon using the rest api call so that means the docker cli will run the commands and the docker daemon will receive that command using the rest api call so what are the functionalities we have to learn in the docker so the four core functionalities what we need to learn in the docker is the outside boxes four are there right so these are the four functionalities which we need to learn in the docker images container creation networking volume management and building custom images so there is nothing but images and container networking and data volumes volume management and building custom images so these are all we need to learn not only we are using the existing images we are building our own images with the concept called docker files so existing images means so already predefined images not only we are using so if you want to build your own images means with the concept called as docker files you can develop your you can create your own custom images also these are the major core functionalities of your docker engine so this is the architecture of the docker so you will be able to see primarily there are two things client and the docker host docker host is nothing but your docker server that is you are having docker daemon inside the docker daemon you will be able to see what are the things it is happening so docker daemon will take the existing image and it will create a container out of this one if the image is not existing means then it will take the image from the registry and here the commands the client is uh, sending the commands to the docker host so and the docker daemon is executing the particular command so that is the architecture of the docker in the previous diagram we have docker cli and docker host and the registry so these are the three docker client docker host and the registry first we will execute the docker cli commands in your local system so that means 
in your lo in our local system we will execute the docker cli commands now this cli commands will talk to the docker host machine with medium something called as an unix socket so how the cli will send the command means with the help of the unix socket Okay, so that that is that unix socket is present in where, slash where slash run slash docker dot sock. I have shown you about that file also. I have shown you that file in our previous video. It uses a socket layer in order to transfer the information from client to the server and server to the client. So this is the medium what we are using right now with the machine itself. So this is the medium what we are using right now within the machine itself. So the within the machine, if you want to try, if you want to talk with the DLS, Docker CLA and the Docker daemon means, then we we are using the Unix socket layer. That means my server and client are running on the same machine, and it is using the Unix socket to transfer the data between them. So that means the Docker client and the Docker server should rely should 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 exist in the same machine only. That means in the same local machine only it should exist. and that client will talk to the server using a uh, medium called as an unix socket once the data has reached the docker server or the docker engine it will take the request and it will do some particular processing in the back end then then it will search for the image let's say that i am trying to create an nginx container first it will see in my local system whether i have the nginx image available or not my docker daemon first it will see whether nginx image is available or not if the image is not available it will talk to my registry called docker hub i told you right and we will see these all the practical implementation so just i am trying to explain you theoretically the docker hub is a registry where you can download some public images so if you want to download the private images then you need then you have to authenticate whatever it is so if you are having some private images or in anything means so there you need to have a authentication then only you can download that image it will download the image and store it in the local system where you run the cli commands and there it will create a container so that means whenever you want to create a container first it will search for the image whether it is available in your local system or not if it is not available then it will try to download the image from the registry and then it will store it in our local system so where you run the cli commands and then it will create a container so this is the process exactly how it will happen so without an image you cannot create a container so that means if you doesn't have any image image means you cannot create any container so this is the basic workflow of what happens when you try to run a cli command there are these are two major components which interact with each other with the help of unix socket there is nothing but docker cli and the docker daemon so these are the two major components which interact with each other with the help of unix socket so now unix socket means you will be having some doubt regarding this one So the Unix socket is is available at the path where slash run slash Docker dot sock. You will be able to see that one. It is a non-network Unix socket. So this Unix socket is a non-network Unix socket. So that means your CLI and Docker server has to be running on the same machine. Let's say that your Docker CLI and the Docker server are on the different machines. So with Docker CLI is one is on one machine and the Docker server or the Docker engine is on another machine. both cannot talk to each other using this unix socket so whatever the unix socket right now we are having both cannot talk to each other it is not transferred over the network if you really want to communicate with the docker server which is sitting in another machine means then we have to use something called ssh based communication or tls based communication so right now in the docker we are using non network unix socket so this one we'll try to see later in on networking thing so right now we are using non network unix socket So this is all about the explanation about the Docker container. Hope you understood about this one. So one thing what you need to understand is the Docker architecture. So what it will try to do. So whenever whenever we try to type the command, whenever we whenever we type a command in the Docker CLI. Sorry, one second. Where is my yeah? One second. So this is the architecture you need to understand. So here we are having a Docker client and the Docker host. so the docker client will talk to the docker host using a non network unix socket so you need to understand that this docker client and the docker host should be available in the same machine it should not be present in another machine so this one cannot be in another machine and this one cannot be in another machine and now this docker client will try to uh, send the command so using the non networking unix socket and the docker daemon will take that command and it will try to create the container so for creating the container what it will try to do is the docker daemon will try to check the image whether the image is locally present in the system or not if the image is locally present in the system means it will directly create the container so if the image is not available in the 
in our, in our local system means then it will go to the docker registry that is nothing but docker hub which is a public repository it is an open source anybody can download that uh, images from there and there it will try to download the image first into your local system and uh, it will place that image in your local system then afterwards using that uh, image in the local system it will create the container so this is the total workflow here i am trying to explain it so then again if you want to cre create the same image means already it has been downloaded into your local system then it will try to create the container directly so this is the workflow actually the docker exactly what it is happening so hope you understood about this docker container in the next video we will try to create an nginx container using this uh, image and uh, this workflow so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you